Okay, so now we're recording. Welcome to Finding a College. That's a good fit for you. So I'm Jen Marsden. For those of you who don't know me, I am the College and Career Specialist is my official title at AHS. And I'm going to take you through this PowerPoint, but we're not going to stick on the PowerPoint. We're kind of going to float around and look at some resources we have available at AHS. And if I get a chance, I'll throw some of the links for you in the chat, but also all links to most of the things I'm talking about, you can find in the Grizzogram or in the counseling newsletter that we've sent out. Okay, so before we jump into the presentation, I am the only presenter here, but just in case you do not know your counselor or your student's counselor, these are our counselors. So Diane Berry, students A through HA, Brianna Trevino, students HE through N, we're talking last names, and Maurice Montero, students O through Z. Carrie Phipps is our freshman counselor. There's me and then Karen Baratz who students when you're seniors, she's our office secretary in the counseling office. She's also our scholarship coordinator. So seniors become pretty familiar with Karen um, during that year. And so here's a little plug. If you are a student who's going to be applying to private colleges, you'll be using what's called the Common App. It's an application where you can apply to a lot of colleges through one application. And part of that is your counselor will write you a recommendation. So this is my plug that if you haven't started to um, get to know your counselor, which for some of you, your counselors are brand new, so I'm sure you haven't, maybe just emailed with them, maybe Zoomed if you're lucky. Um, but that's a really good thing. Um, maybe, you know, in sophomore year, not so important, junior year, a little more important. But what the counselors do, not to scare you, like they don't have to know you that well. Um, but for Common App, um, our counselors will interview every student. So you'll, you'll let them know that you're applying through Common App. And then we have teacher recommendation request forms and counselors recommendation request forms where you tell them all sorts about yourself. And then what our counselors do, because the teachers you ask probably know you pretty well because they've had you in class, but our counselors will call you in, um, schedule an interview and spend a while talking to you so they can really craft a, a good recommendation letter for you. Okay, so I like the slide because it really gives a sense of what we're talking about tonight. Um, these are all the things that students really should be considering and many more things than this, but um, these are some of the big ones when you're trying to find a college that's going to be a good fit for you, the student. And also as we'll talk about student is usually part of the larger family picture. And so often um, where a student goes, comes down to what's best for the family as well. So programs of study, do schools that you're interested in actually have the major um, that you're interested in? We have students who are, you know, have dreamed of going and becoming a duck, but they wanna be engineers. And U of O does not have an engineering program. Student housing, I know actually some people, students who have picked their college based on the dorms um, because they like the dorms and they liked what was available. Not that that's the reason, but it's good to kind of have an idea of what student housing is. Admissions requirements are good to start getting a handle on when you're looking at schools to see if you're a good fit, a good candidate for that school. Location, met with a junior today. Arizona State is where she wants to go. I asked her why, it's warm. Um, and, and a lot of students feel that way. They want to be somewhere warmer. They want to be somewhere where they can ski. There's all sorts of different reasons kids look at different locations. Financial aid, we're going to talk about some tonight. Um, cost, student population, faculty student ratio, all of these are kind of figuring out, and you all are in a good place, sophomores and juniors, um, to start kind of looking at these issues and, and figuring out what's best for you. So tonight's goals, understand the importance of finding a college that is a good fit. And when we say good fit, like I was just mentioning, we're looking at a number of things, academically, culturally, financially. And then, like I said, excuse me, we're gonna learn about resources that can help you with the college search and help you gain insight on how to explore and find college pathways that will be a good fit for you. So I'm gonna pause for a sec just to see if anyone has any questions yet. Okay, because I definitely can't see the chat. It's not popping down. 
Okay, so we're going to start with some resources. So one is our AHS College Handbook, and I'm going to escape from the PowerPoint for a sec and take you to the AHS website. Really a little hard when this share screen thing pops down. I have the handbook pull up. Okay. Uh-oh, now it closed. Okay, so I'm gonna take you to the college handbook. Can you all see this screen that says College and Career Center? Yeah. Up. Awesome, okay. So right here, these two things, seniors, spring update, juniors, I'm gonna to talk to you too long. Since I'm here, I'll just show you. This is a great resource, College Visits and Information Sessions Calendar. If you click there, you will see, and I'm trying to update this um, every Friday, um, all the college visits that are potentially coming up, information sessions. So today, Northern Arizona University, um, their admissions rep had a virtual Zoom session, and I don't know if this is blocking you all, but so, um, tonight's info session, I put a number of these virtual college fairs, they're nationwide, but they're a really good way to start to get a taste of some of the schools that are out there. If you've never been to one, they're free. They also have information sessions like about financial aid and scholarships and how to write a good essay. So there's a few on here last week. There was one that was a general um, coming up next week. There's one on performing and visual arts. Um, we have these CCR advisories, College and Career Readiness. That's our senior class every Wednesday morning. So that's when students meet with me. Portland State University, a rep will be here in a few weeks. Um, this is really good for you all to know. Um, the Oregon Public Universities, every spring they do a tour. And usually they come to AHS and sophomores and juniors have the opportunity for about two hours to come and learn about the Oregon Public Universities. Usually we come to the theater, each school gives a brief um, kind of highlights of their school and then students get to pick two or three schools to go to breakout sessions with. This year it's going to be virtual, April 6th and 7th, giving students and parents a few different times to check it out. So just check this out when you have time. We've got some private universities coming up, Westminster, Pacific, some more virtual fairs. So that is a good resource to start learning about schools. And even if it's a school you've never heard of, like, and you've got a, you know, you've got a half an hour, go check it out. You'll start to hear what's available at different schools. I've had students come to a visit with a rep and be like, wow, I'm kind of interested in that school now. Like I had no idea. So right here for you juniors and um, for you sophomores who are here too, there's gonna be some good information here, juniors, college and career center spring update. So I brought, came here cause we're looking for the HS con college handbook, which is like what I wanted to start talking to you about now. But also here, if you haven't seen in the Grizzogram or other places, there's ACT and SAT updates and information, upcoming info sessions like the one tonight, um, info about SCORE, so lots of stuff here. So we will go to the handbook now. And if you haven't seen this before, um, you can obviously find the link online, but there's also hard copy available and you can pick one up at the distribution center or actually ask the main office if they just throw a little box outside the front door in case anyone wants to swing by and pick up a hard copy at some point. But um, I put this together every year and actually have not put a new one together this spring because we've got a lot going on with COVID and most of the information in here is completely accurate. Um, so this just gives a summary and some of you might have already seen this, gotten the information, but I'm gonna take you to the section now, pretty much we wanna focus on finding the right school for you and show you some resources in here. Okay, is everyone seeing the college handbook now? I don't want to be referring to something that you all can't see. So give me a thumbs up. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you juniors and you ambitious sophomores, here's a checklist of things to start thinking about. And a senior checklist. So there's a lot of great resources on this page, um, both online resources and print books, handbooks, and books about um, 
the college um, search process. So right up here at the top, I just like to point this out and I say this in various ways, but it is really true. This um, pathway to higher education that you're all on now is really an incredible opportunity for students for reflection, for self-discovery, for growth, um, as they figure out like what really is gonna be a good fit for them and to really do the research, to really do the work, to look at schools, to look what's available, um, to think about what's important to them so that they can make a good choice um, for their next steps after high school. And it's also a, a, a really a, a process of reflection and growth for the parent as well, because a lot of parents come to the table with some preconceived ideas of what a college pathway will look like for their student. So it's really a, a process you can all walk through together. And there's a new book out now, which has been highly recommended to me. I haven't read it yet, but just ordered it from Bloomsbury. I think we're going to do it for our next book group. We have a, um, my Aspire program, we have a, a book group. It's called The College Conversation. Uh, I don't know who it's by, but if you can't find it by looking for it, Googling College Conversation or calling Bloomsbury. Um, I've heard it's it's a really great one to guide parents and students through the, the questions that you're going to be looking at the next couple of years. And, you know, students and parents, most everyone really, right, we look to the internet for our information and there are great resources online, um, but there's also a lot of great, uh, there's a lot of benefits in having things in hardback, like those big college handbooks. One of the ones I really like, and I've got lots of copies in the office. If anyone wants to check one out, I could leave it at the distribution center, is the Fisk Guide to Colleges that I'm pointing to right here. And one of the things I like about it is it doesn't have every school, but it has a lot of schools our, our kids are interested in. And so you read about the school and it has anecdotal information and kind of statistical information you'll find in other handbooks. But one of the things it has is if you like this school, here's five other schools that are kind of like it um, that you might also want to check out. And that's a nice jump off point for some students. And when you can have this on the kitchen table and parents and students can be looking at it and say, hey, I was just reading about this school. I've never heard about it. You might want to check that out. Um, another one like that is um, Colleges That Change Lives. Do I have it on here? Yes, I do have it on here. A it's got a lot of liberal arts schools um, that are great schools, often with really big endowments, so they can give students really great financial aid packages. Um, so just check out this page. And again, go for it. This is your journey. So these statistics are kind of interesting. One of the reasons I didn't do a new handbook this year is this is one of the things that I always update, but with COVID last spring, um, a lot of the students' plans, which is how I, I developed this. I know a lot of students' plans were up in the air at the end of the year and what they thought they were gonna do, they didn't end up doing. I think that's gonna be pretty different for this year's seniors, but it gives you a sense of some of the schools that our students go to general ACT and SAT information, and we don't need to talk about this right now. But so this is what I would want to draw your attention to, the college search. And so here is where all these things that were on that slide are, some you know good questions to start asking yourself to start that self-reflection, um, both for the student and for the student and family um, to start to think about. and. The college search used to really be about for a lot of students who were looking at more competitive colleges. Um, you know, which schools can get I get into? What are my reach schools? What are my safety schools? And 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 to a certain extent, that's still true for a lot of our students. The road to college is pretty simple. Um, we have a in one of our powerpoints. We talk about A to B. You know, pretty straight line. You're a student you know you want to study engineering, you, you love OSU, you've been there, they have great engineering programs, you know your, your family can afford it. You might apply to OSU, maybe apply to a community college and that's it. Senior year is not, it's not that big stressful having to write a lot of college essays, look at a bunch of schools, travel around. For other students, it could be a little more curvy. You're looking at some more selective schools that you might not get into. 
you're not sure what schools are going to cost you, what your family can afford. Um, a lot of our students are looking at state schools, community colleges, and private schools for that reason. Um, so there's a lot of good questions, like I mentioned in this section, to ask yourself. You know, really start to think about. You might not know what you want to major in, but to kind of look at the different majors and programs that a school has, especially if you do have an idea of what you want to major in. What are the admission requirements? How competitive is it to get in? So those are the kinds of things. So I'm gonna take a breather for a sec, see if anyone has any questions or if there's anything in the chat that I'm missing. Doesn't look like there's anything in the chat. <laughs> you all have any questions? Feel free to just yell them out because I can't see you. <laughs> so if you're raising your hand, I wouldn't know. So just before we go to the next important factor, you all aren't really at that spot yet, but when you get into senior year and you're kind of narrowing your choices down, what I found, I've been doing this for about 12 years now, that a lot of students would pick their school. Yeah, they have a major. Yeah, they look, the classes look good, but they didn't really look at what a graduation plan at that school looked like. Um, they didn't look at how much general ed there might be or you know, what focus the computer science program or how many different pathways there were. Um, I have a student a senior right now who's wanting to go into public health. The public health programs at the different colleges look different. Some have different focus areas, um, some have more robust programs, some not as robust. So as you're kind of dialing in different schools that you're interested in for various reasons, it's great to really kind of look at what the four-year plan would look like at that school. Um, there are some schools that have no general ed. So for those of you who are not sure what that means, that means that at a lot of schools, besides your major, what you're studying, your major field and your minor, if a school has, requires a minor or two, there's also general education requirements, which are a number of humanities classes, social classes, um, sometimes science, math, so it's really important to check that out. I definitely have students who pick schools because they don't want to go to schools with general ed requirements. They want to go to a school where they can dive into their major. Of course, most of those schools encourage students to explore other areas, um, but they don't necessarily have to. We have a student at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. I always pronounce it wrong, so hopefully I didn't slaughter the name of the city. But one of the reasons she liked um, the, the system over there is students apply to specific programs and she's studying, I think, neurobiology. And so from day one at college there, that's what she's been studying and, you know, very intensive. And it was great because she really knew that's what, what she wanted to do. Most of our students don't want something like that. They're not sure what they want to do. They want to take some general ed. So good things to be thinking about. Okay, size. This is kind of obvious one, right? But, but often students really, really don't get a sense of this until they spend some time on a campus. And it's kind of hard this year, the last couple of years. Um, hopefully it'll ease up in the fall. And maybe some of you, I, I know some of you because I've, I've talked to you individually, have spent time on college campuses. You know, there's a lot of encouragement for families when they're traveling, if their students are thinking college, like when you're in a town, just check out the campus, go eat in one of the cafeterias, go to the planetarium, start to feel what it feels like to be on a big campus like Arizona State University, like I was mentioning earlier, versus a small campus like Lewis and Clark up by Portland. And I'll hear students every year say, oh, no, I want to go and I want to be, you know, in that 200 seat lecture hall, anonymous, that sounds good to me, you just go, you soak in the information, um, and then I'll see them the next year, it's like, eh, I don't really like that. <laughs> I, I'm going, I'm transferring to Lewis and Clark or I'm going to go to SOU or I'm, I'm at SOU now and I really like that I have like 30 people in my calculus class instead of 200 and I have a full professor instead of a grad student. So, you know, those are the kind of differences in big and small schools that students don't necessarily think about or even really understand what feels good or right to them until they're there. I've also had students who have a school that on paper looks great 
like University of Puget Sound. Um, I had a parent who told me this, like that was her daughter's number one choice. And we have lots of kids who go there and love it. But when her daughter went there, just walking around campus, she was like, oh no, this is not the school for me. And one of the reasons was she looked around, well, early in the morning, according to her, her story, nobody was up, nobody was around. Um, and it was just kind of dreary. Um, and then she went and visited Redlands. This was a volleyball player. Redlands is down in the LA area. And there were lots of students that were up and about and jogging early. And she saw more her people there. And I'm sure there's lots of athletes at, at Puget Sound as well. But the point of this is that it's really good to get a sense of that. If you can get on a campus, you really start to get a better feel of what that campus and the people there are like. I mean, it might be a little superficial, but... Um, Honestly, there's been a number of studies that have said the number one factor in a student's choice in school is their tour guide, if they like their tour guide. It, it really makes a big impression on students if they felt a connection with the tour guide, if the, they liked the way they related. Um, and that's because the student had that sense of, oh, these could be my people. And for a lot of students, that's one of the things they're looking for in a college, having that college experience, that connection with others. So good questions to think about and good reasons to get out there and check them out. And I'm really pretty sure this fall and even this summer, um, a lot of campuses will be much more open. Any questions before I pop over to location, which is kind of similar? Um, no questions? Okay. So location, an, another pretty obvious one. Um, I have a lot of students who, you know, want to be somewhere, like I said, where they can ski, where they can mountain bike. Northern Arizona University um, in Northern Arizona, popular school with our kids because of that. Some students really want to be in an urban area because they've lived in Ashland, they love Ashland, but they'd love to be somewhere like New York City or San Francisco or Seattle. Um, be far from home, closer to home. I want to be able to drive back and forth or no, I want to be somewhere where my parents visit or I just want to feel like I'm somewhere totally different. I want to be on the East Coast. Sometimes that's why kids pick the East Coast. They just want to have a different experience. Um, so those are good things to think about. And then atmosphere, really the feel, the culture of the campus and again, that's another thing that is really hard to, to get a sense of unless you've been on the campus. Um, you can definitely, there's lots of resources online like niche.com. Um, I think it is college confidential. Some of these reference books I've said will have all sorts of interviews with students, um, you know, what the campus life is like. Is there a big Greek culture? I mean, I have students who want to go to a campus with an active Greek sorority fraternity system and other students who are absolutely not. I don't want there to be any kind of Greek system on at the school I go to. Same with sports. Some students really want to have a rah-rah kind of environment. Others don't, others don't care. Um, so again, this is a, a really personal kind of thing that you kind of need to figure out for yourself. So I'm not going to go through and I haven't been obviously all these questions, but definitely worth it for you um, when you get some time. And then again, um, cost, right? So schools range in tuition from our community colleges in the $5,000 average a year range all the way to over $70,000 a year. And um, it really depends, you know, lots of families have different financial resources, um, but there's also schools, like I said, with great endowments where students can get, you know, practically a full ride. Um, we, there are a lot of schools that are called no loan. And if anyone's interested in learning more about them, I've compiled a list over the years where they look at your family's resources and then they offer you a package that they feel like your family will be able to afford without taking out any loans. And so here's a little more about creating your list after you've started to kind of think about the schools that you're interested in. Before we move on, I'm just gonna mention the Western Undergraduate Exchange, um, which is fondly known um, as WUI. 
And so Northern Arizona U University is one of those schools. And WUI schools are the 14 states in the West and there's some islands that are a part of it as well where students can go to school in those, um, at those schools in those states play a part in WUI for really reduced tuition. So it's not out of state tuition, that's usually four times in state tuition, but um, one and a half times. So that's a good thing to keep an eye on. And there are, there is a WUI section in here. So I just was gonna draw your attention to this. If you really have no idea what the cost of college is these days, um, there's the student budgets for every school in Oregon, including the private schools. So it can kind of give you a sense of the breakdown of tuition and fees, um, room and board, those kind of things, and then kind of the total. This is a little confusing because they total other costs here, which are the everything but room and board. That confuses students sometimes, but it's, it's a good jump off point for uh, families or students that really have no clue what college is costing these days. So I'm gonna switch back to the PowerPoint. Any questions while I'm kind of jumping back here? No, okay. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about some of this. Um, one thing that plays into the cost of attendance and planning is the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. It's what students and their family fill out in the fall of senior year. And in the end, it spits out what's called your expected family contribution, your EFC, and that's what all financial aid pretty much revolves around. So one of the reasons I'm telling you this, not that you really need to know about it now, is that I talk to students and, and parents all the time about the cost of college is not a big mystery anymore. Every college has the required by law, um, the Obama administration made this happen. Every college is required to have a net price calculator somewhere accessible on their website. The easiest way to find them is just to Google the name of the school, net price calculator, and it'll give you the link. Um, some are better than others, but what they do is they ask you questions about your family resources, your students' GPA, SAT scores, and then they give you an idea of what it will cost to go to that school. Yes, there are numbers of schools that, you know, they give five students a year, a certain number, a full ride. Um, we had that with Lewis and Clark a few years ago, which usually all students get a twenty to $25,000 a year presidential or dean scholarship to take that off the top of the 70,000 plus and students who qualify for federal financial aid, the Pell Grant gets some more, but usually nobody can go to Lewis and Clark without it costing at least thirty dollars to $40,000 a year. But a few years ago, one of our students got one of their five, I can't remember the name of their scholarships that covers all of tuition. Um, and so it was a great deal for him. It made it cheaper for him to go to Lewis and Clark than to go to U of O. So I always encourage students who are interested in private colleges to definitely explore them. Um, and also for parents to do that as well and to have those conversations as a family um, about what's gonna make sense for your family. Uh, for instance, like if a student falls in love with Chapman College University down in um, California, in Orange, California, um, a lot of our kids tour it, love it. It's beautiful. Um, they get in and it's a very expensive school. Sometimes they could give great aid. Same with a school like Santa Clara, um, south of San Francisco, really popular school with our students. So you look at these schools, okay, you know, if you don't get a lot of aid, it could be $50,000 a year, they could end up giving you more and then it would be 30. If it's 50, not quite sure our family is going to be able to swing that 20. Yes. And I, I say this over and over again, because really, I don't want parents to have to be the dream killers in the spring of senior year and for students to just be devastated. Because when I first started this job, that was the case, parents would say, I just want my student to apply everywhere and then we'll figure out the cost. Well, that's a lot of work for students. Applying to colleges is a lot of work. And so yes, encourage your students to apply to their dream schools, but you know, do the research so your, your student knows that, hey, if you get into Lewis and Clark and it's reasonable for us, then yeah, we'll make it work. Um, but if Lewis and Clark is $50,000 a year for you and U of O is 20, 
and you're thinking of graduate school, you know, 20 versus 50 over four years, that's a big difference. So, you know, these are the kind of conversations um, that are really good to start having and thinking about. And, and again, you know, I tell kids, because this is how I start off senior year and the kids who come to me earlier, and some of you have heard this, like if you have parents or grandparents who have said, we have you covered, we've been saving, we have a 529, you are so grateful, right? Like, thank you so much. I'm so excited, you know, that I have support um, financially to go to college, but I just need to check. Like, when you say have me covered, do you mean like $28,000 a year U of O have me covered or like $67,000 a year read have me covered? Because that's a big difference. And that's the kind of thing kids need to know. They don't need to know how much you make, how in debt you are, but they do need to have a sense, and a lot of scholarship applications ask this, how much your parents can afford to contribute to your education every year. And that's a realistic thing for students to ask their parents and for parents to be able to let them know as they start to do their research. So here also the Oregon Opportunity Grant, I mentioned um, the Pell Grant, which is the federal grant. The Oregon Opportunity Grant is a state grant that this year for four-year schools um, was $3,600. And then the Oregon Promise Grant is our state's grant to help make community college affordable for all students. I already mentioned the need met versus no loan. Well, I mentioned no loan schools. Um, need met. So when, as you're starting to look at these schools, you're using net price calculators. Um, no loan means they're really going to look at your family, look at your resources, and they're going to try to make it so that you don't have to take out any loans, the student or the parent. Some schools say they meet financial need. That's different than no loan because when you fill out the FAFSA and your expected family contribution that EFC gets spit out, you're gonna see it and you're gonna think unless it's zero, which is great when it comes to college, but for most of our families, you know, it's it's 10,000, it's 20,000, it's 30,000. And you see that number and think, oh, well, the, we can't afford to pay 30,000 or 20,000 a year toward our, our child's college. Um, but that's how colleges see that number. So when they give you your financial package, they'll give you enough to meet that EFC need. Um, Another thing to know is that you can always appeal to colleges if you feel like your EFC does not reflect um, what your actual family's resources are. So we already talked a lot about this. I'm gonna kind of go through that. Um, we've talked about a lot of the resources in the handbook, um, the website, I showed you some of those, right? Where you can find the handbook information, there's all sorts of links to financial aid resources, scholarships, a lot of things that become more useful senior year. Your academic counselors, as I said, good to start connecting with them. Um, senior year, every senior will have a college and career readiness class in the fall. Um, if you are a student who's gonna take AP Econ, your CCR class will be embedded in AP Econ. I mentioned the college visit, showed you where to find those. Aspire, if you haven't heard of it, is a program that I coordinate where we have mentors from the community, adults like me who volunteer and work one-on-one -on -one with students, helping them make a plan, figure out a school that's gonna be a good fit. And also peers, teachers, um, friends, um, parents, friends, those are really great people to talk about, talk to you as you're doing your research, trying to find more ideas of schools, um, asking people, where did you go to school? How did you become an engineer? How did you become a massage therapist? How did you become an architect? Because um, students, I think we were talking the other night when we had our score information night, what, what we realize is that students really don't know all the career pathways that are out there. They know the biggies, doctor, lawyer, they know what their parents do. Lots of students are interested in becoming teachers because they interact with teachers every day or they absolutely don't want to be a teacher. Um, but there are really so many career pathways um, that students don't consider, don't think about. And so um, we have all sorts of ways that students can do career research and look at things they're interested in. But one of them is this 
college and career exploration website uh, platform that we have called SCORE, which if you're a junior, and I think some of you sophomores have been introduced to it too now, um, has a lot for students. So I'm gonna switch off here for a sec, just to give you, those of you who haven't checked out SCORE. So you juniors that are here, I'm gonna ask you to chime in. Have you, oh, and of course I closed my, this whole thing shut down a while ago. Okay, I'm gonna have to log into my SCORE account. Okay, we have two juniors here. I'm gonna ask you to unmute and put you on the spot. If you're there, if you went to eat dinner, maybe the parents or someone can say, so if you're a junior and willing to unmute, I'm wondering if you have um, done the youth science assessment. I have. Who was that? Was that Ian? Yeah. Okay. And um, so what do you think? Have you finished it up? Yeah, I finished it. Have you started to explore it yet? Um, a little bit, but not really. Just like the basic jobs that it gave me, but I haven't really looked into any of them. Okay, so what other juniors are here? I get, is it just, is Macy with you, James, or no? She's not. Okay, have you heard her mention it at all? I have not. Okay, so ask her about it, because okay. she have finished it already. Knowing her, she's probably already finished it. So what I'm on now is called You Science. So it's not about science, it's about the science of you. And so, it's an assessment that looks at a person's aptitudes, their strengths, their talents, whatever you wanna call them, and then also their interests. And so we just started using this last year and I was a little skeptical because I remembered those kind of career aptitude things we did back in the dark ages when I was in school bubbling in and um, didn't feel like it was super accurate for me, but I, I was pretty impressed with this tool for a number of reasons. So once you create um, once you finish the brain games, as they call them, um, and the interest profiler, it gives you this little, what we call the donut, um, the aptitude donut, your strengths or talents um, to kind of explore. And it kind of pegged me pretty well. And everyone is strong in something. And it, it's, one of the things I like about it is there are just all these different rabbit holes to go down if you're interested in. Um, so we had juniors last week in their advisory. They've been working on the youth science assessment for a couple of weeks. And then last week we gave them their personal education plan. Part of it was to kind of explore this, like what are your three um, strongest areas? And really this is supposed to not change through your life. So me taking it at 55 last year versus me taking it at 18. It's supposed to be pretty similar. Um, it also, so you can look through this way. We had students then look at what are the types of work that interest you to look at the three um, that came up for you. And then one of the things you can do, you can look at career matches this way. And from career matches, you can start to look at colleges. It just kind of goes all over the place. Now, you know, career matches, you know, it's a kind of funny thing. So this is looking at overall fit for me based on my aptitudes and my interests. Now, this is a little wonky, like why would you have architecture professor before being an architect? But for me, as I scroll down, um, I was like, yeah, you know, I could see having wanted to do this, like I would be good at this. Um, like a genetic counselor, like that was an event. Well, maybe it was a field that existed when I was in college, but I've had students who have gone into that field. And I think that would be super interesting for me now because you, you're counseling, plus it's the whole genetic science piece, which as I told my husband, when you look at aptitude fit for me, um, one of the first ones is aerospace engineer. And he always likes to make fun of me and says, oh yeah, you're such a rocket scientist. Well, According to them, I could have been, but I have absolutely no interest in that. Um, but what was really the most, what I found the most helpful was my interest fit, because these were definitely more um, things I could see myself really being in. Um, so it, it's worth it's worth checking out. Um, definitely for students to not kind of like, oh, none of these are things I would want to be, but to to think about why based on my interests, 
and my aptitudes, would these be what they threw out for me? Um, one of the things that's, any questions before I go on to the next part? I'm just babbling on. Um, one of the things that came up at the score information night we had a couple of weeks ago, um, there was some skepticism about this, especially the side of the, co the college side, which I'll show you in a minute about searching and how do colleges get on there and are they paying to be on there and they being featured because they pay and the reality is our kids need to widen if they're looking at more than just going to OSU or U of O or they, you know, they know what they want to do. Our kids need to widen their college search, not narrow it down like, because kids think of the schools they've heard of, right? They know the Ivies, they know Stanford, they know where their parents went, they know some schools they've seen on TV, but they really don't have a sense of all the schools that are out there. And before I go to the college search part of SCORE, I just wanna show you this, because I think it's a really useful section. It's called Describing You. Sometimes it comes up as something else, but uh, I can't remember what it is, but I'm not sure why. So you can, these are all based on your aptitudes, the brain games, things that they say would be a good way to describe you. And so when you find ones that you like, you can click on them and save them to your little portfolio, or maybe you click on the ones you don't like. I can't remember, but, oh, I removed that. So anyway, so you don't wanna click on the ones that you like. And then they give you like statements to describe yourself in all sorts of ways. So if I ever have to apply for a job again, write a cover letter, um, have an interview, these are great jump off points. And we had our seniors use them this year after doing the assessment because in CCR, they work on cover letters, work on resumes, um, do interviews. So these can be really helpful and also give you a, a better sense of who you are and your strengths. Like you might just think, oh, everyone's good at this, but no, they're not. They didn't get that. They didn't get your awesome at this, you did. Um, like I'm automatically aware of trends or patterns in numerical data. It's like, yeah, that's true. I kind of am, but I would never have thought to say that about myself. So it's pretty cool, juniors. If you haven't finished or you have, um, explore it more, we're gonna use it. Um, parents, if you, it used to be that you could log on to use science and just do it for free, which I think is a great way to connect with your student and compare your donuts, um, which is <laughs> what have my daughter always wanted to do that. What's your sign? What's my sign? Like, let's compare. Um, or what's your Myers-Briggs? What's mine? But um, you actually, your student can invite you to their score account so you can kind of check it out too. But if you want to check out you Science or score on your own and make your own account, um, it's I think it might be 30 bucks. So here's the college side of, um, of score and it's got a great search engine. So I was working on here with a student who, um, what was her preference search? So was looking for a bachelor's, wanted to only be in Washington or Oregon. You can add all sorts of uh, majors. Let's see, let's go back. How do you clear it? That's a good question. Hmm. I wonder. Okay, let's see, build your list, start a college search. Oh, did someone ask a question? I think I see the chat. Okay. Okay. Oh, good question. Someone wanted to know where you could find the question or where you could find the virtual visits that I mentioned. So if you go to um, the AHS website and you go to the College and Career Center and you are on the College and Career Center homepage, the calendar is probably about a third of the way down. There's a live link to the calendar. Okay, so back to college search. Oops. I don't wanna go there, I wanted to go back. Okay, build your college, start a college search. Oh, takes me back here. I guess I need to learn how to clear this. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's see. Delete, there we go. Delete. 
Okay, so must have, let's see what we wanna add. You can look at degrees. Let's say I wanna look at four-year degrees, schools that have four years, because community colleges are also on here. Um, personal interests and activities. You can search for all sorts of things, um, show categories. So then you can just kind of go through and mark some things and really into the visual arts. Oh, wow, you can really get specific here. You could get general um, into art and into broadcasting. Diane Berry is really good. Score is her baby. So she can maneuver around here really quickly. And she actually showed me on here or the other night at SCORE, one sec, at the SCORE information night, you can get to all these social media sites for different colleges where you can like see all the radio stations, the clubs, oh, they have a Quidditch club, oh, they have a radio station where you can volunteer, oh, they have this major and that major. And then what happens as you start to do, put these things in here and you can be very specific, you can put states, you can do regions, it'll start to give you schools. And some of them will be schools you've never heard of, which is kind of cool because I always love checking out new schools. Sometimes I'll click on them and I was like, mm, no, this isn't a school. Um, that our students will be interested in. Other times, you know, it's schools that a lot of students know, like University of Michigan, Texas A&M. Um, so it's, it's a fun tool when you can really kind of customize it for yourself, your student, and just check out. And you could start to build areas of schools that are interesting to you. So there's really um, a lot in SCORE for students and parents to check out. So that's my plug for SCORE. Diane would have done a better job. Um, but the last thing, which we're not getting to do this year, this college fit um, game that we play usually when we do college fit night, I just want to, I left this slide on here because it's kind of what we've been talking about. So what you do with the game is there's these seven um, hypothetical schools and everybody that is in attendance gets to pull a little slip, like a fortune cookie slip out of the bag. And it gives you one little piece of information about yourself, like you're a 4.0 stu student, or you're potentially a D1 football player, or you love art. Um, and with that one piece of information, and we have information about all these schools around, you go and stand by, there's all over the library, you know, the school name. And then everyone talks about why they chose that school. And then you get to pick another little piece of paper about yourself. And then you can either stay at the school you think is going to be the best fit or you move to a different school. Um, and you go on to about five different pieces of information about yourself. Or learned recently um, that, oh no, you know, this happened or, oh no, I fell in love. And now I don't want to go so far away. Not that I should anyone should change their plans of what they want to do um, based on things like that. But as we've learned in the last year, um, life happens. And I used to have to really, really stress with kids that, hold on one sec, I'll go back to sharing this. So, um, so I'll take you back to the AHS page because that will be helpful for you to see. Um, so the life happens. Um, you know, COVID, <laughs> yeah, that was the, for our seniors last year, you know, they had really great plans. Some went and did what they were planning to do. Others put things on hold. They thought they were going to go to a four-year university in California. They decided to stay home and take community college classes online for the first semester or the first year. Um, so things happen. Um, and so it's good to have a variety of options. And so senior year, I'll really encourage students to, you know, always apply to a state school, always apply to a community college, have your local options available. Because what happens is students don't plan for those options and then things happen in the spring and at the last minute they want to apply to SOU. And great, it's a great school, they get in, but they didn't apply by the priority deadline. So now they can't get the $5,000 merit aid that they would have gotten if they had applied on time. So senior year, I do a lot of um, admissions on the spot where students come and they meet with the SOU admissions counselor, PSU, U of O, and it's free to apply um, just so students have those as an option. Um, because I, I just 
I hate for that to happen in the spring where a student then decides, oh no, I wanna to go to community college now, but I didn't complete the Oregon Promise application, which takes five minutes. And now I can't get the $3,700 the state wanted to throw my way um, to go to a community college. So juniors, you're gonna hear a lot of that um, senior year. And so just remember that's why I, I really stress the options. So for the person who asked, here's the College and Career Center website, uh, Web page, which you find under counseling services. Here's special information for juniors. Here's the link to the college visits. And if you weren't here in the beginning too, there's lots here under the junior section for juniors and sophomores, college handbook, which I was showing you a lot of, um, ACT, SAT, and other upcoming information. So I am going to stop recording.